Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Some Marines have captured the imagination of most people. These vessels, which have been around for over a century, have grown to be massive war machines. They can stay submerged until their food runs out, but they must surface at some stage. One of the reasons they surface is for repairs, followed by a crazy process of undocking these U.S. nuclear submarines from shipyards after million-dollar repairs. Norfolk Naval Shipyard in Portsmouth, Virginia was founded in 1776, before America was even a country. It's been used in every major U.S. war. One of the original six frigates in the U.S. Navy was built there. It was called America's First Shipyard. Submarines and other vessels of the U.S. Navy regularly undergo repairs at shipyards such as the one at Norfolk. When Los Angeles-class submarines like the USS Toledo arrived at Norfolk Naval Shipyard, it was the start of a busy engineered overhaul in Dry Dock 2. It took about 437,000 workdays to complete this huge maintenance project, which included fixing and replacing all major systems. However, the submarine had to wait longer than planned at the pier while Dry Dock 2 received important infrastructure upgrades. Even though these changes to the historic site took longer than planned, they were necessary to ensure that NNSY could continue handling modern nuclear submarines. Getting nuclear submarines out of dry docks takes a lot of engineering and organization. First, the dry dock is slowly filled with water while the trim and safety of the submarine are constantly checked. Once the submarine is floating, tugboats carefully move it away from the dock. Heavy lines and winches are used by dock workers to control how the ship moves. Draft marks are always checked to ensure the ballast is in good shape. Before the new submarines become operational, they must undergo sea trials. Submarine sea trials are the result of years of building and testing. After coming off the dock, the ship goes through several tough tests, such as shallow and deep dives, emergency surfacing procedures, and checks of the weapon systems. The first tests mostly focus on basic systems, such as the performance of the nuclear plant, propulsion, and life support. After that, more difficult tests examine sonar systems, how to handle weapons, and what to do in an emergency. The submarine can go at very high speeds, do crashbacks, and move at very sharp angles. What is life like aboard one of these submarines? 
there is a strict 18-hour rotation. Six hours of on-watch, six hours of upkeep and training, and six hours of sleep. If three sailors hot rack, they share two beds in shifts. Submariners must navigate very small passageways and work in equipment rooms that are very close together and small. The environment is totally artificial. The air is recycled, the water is produced, and there has been no natural light for months. Noise control is very important. Even walking must be done quietly. During classified missions, the submarine has no radio contact at all. There is an upside to the life of a submariner. Life on U.S. nuclear submarines includes unexpectedly high quality cuisine as culinary specialists create great meals from scratch. The galley of each submarine functions continuously, providing four meals daily to align with varying watch hours. The cruise mass frequently showcases themed decorations that symbolize the submarine's namesake state. Entertainment comprises movie nights, gaming systems, and fitness equipment. However, there is no external connection or internet access available underwater. The crew devises inventive methods to remain engaged during their restricted leisure time, orchestrating diversions such as chess tournaments and fitness challenges between watch rotations. There comes a time when every submarine gets too old and must end its career. These events are called decommissioning. The decommissioning procedure of a nuclear submarine commences upon its arrival at a specified site, such as Naval Base Kitsap Bremerton. The submarine first undergoes the defueling of its nuclear reactor, a difficult procedure necessitating specialist people and stringent safety regulations. The ship is subsequently deconstructed, beginning with the removal of classified equipment and weapon systems. The nuclear reactor chamber is meticulously sealed and transported as a single unit to designated storage locations. Valuable equipment and materials are recovered for utilization in other vessels or repurposed. The hull is segmented and processed in accordance with stringent environmental and nuclear regulatory standards. The procedure generally spans several years and entails various authorities overseeing the appropriate management of radioactive materials, hazardous waste, and classified elements. The submarine recycling program commences post-defueling upon the vessel's arrival at the shipyard. The procedure commences with comprehensive decontamination of all systems and compartments. Guaranteeing that radiation levels comply with stringent government criteria. Teams methodically disassemble interior elements, 
meticulously recording and safeguarding historical artifacts. All hazardous substances, including asbestos, PCBs, and lead-based paint are eliminated in accordance with environmental requirements. Precious metals and equipment are extracted for recycling or repurposing in other Navy ships. The submarine's propulsion system is deconstructed under strict nuclear regulatory supervision. During submarine decommissioning, hull segments are detached via an exact cutting procedure employing a heat cutting apparatus. Each section weighing hundreds to thousands of tons necessitates comprehensive preparation and engineering calculations before removal. Teams initially identify several secure lifting locations for each section. Generally weighing around 2,000 tons, the reactor chamber necessitates meticulous planning because of its nuclear containment specifications. The hole cutting adheres to specified lines delineated by engineers, guaranteeing structural integrity throughout the removal procedure. Weather conditions must be optimal characterized by negligible wind and unobstructed visibility. Numerous safety teams oversee each part of the activity. Upon separation, these substantial portions are affixed to specialized transport platforms or barges. The entire procedure necessitates meticulous coordination among cutting crews, riggers, engineers, and safety experts. Preparing for each section removal operation may require many days before a single lift. Colossal gantry cranes at Navy shipyards are engineering feats, capable of lifting 3,500 tons. These behemoths dominate the skyline, specifically engineered to manage submarine hull portions during the recycling procedure. Numerous cranes frequently operate in unison, coordinated to ensure optimal equilibrium when transporting massive parts weighing thousands of tons. The reactor compartment piece alone generally weighs 2,000 tons and necessitates extraordinary precision during transport. Crane operators function from elevated control stations, collaborating with ground teams using hand signals and radio transmission. Wind velocities must remain beneath designated thresholds, often 15 knots, prior to the commencement of any significant lift operations. The hoisting procedure entails numerous attachment locations, utilizing sophisticated rigging apparatus tailored for submerged segments. Each lift is meticulously orchestrated with engineering teams determining precise centers of gravity and lift angles to guarantee the secure transport of these massive components. Not all decommissioned submarines are destroyed. Some are converted. The transformation of nuclear submarines into moored training ships signifies a vital prolongation of their operational lifespan. This intricate procedure converts working vessels into fixed training platforms for the nuclear power training unit.
Submarines undergo significant modifications during conversion. The vessel is often segmented, facilitating the extraction of operational equipment while safeguarding essential nuclear training elements. The propulsion plant is usually kept intact but altered for training purposes. New technologies are implemented to facilitate uninterrupted pier side operations encompassing shore-based cooling and electrical services. Specialized hole penetrations are incorporated to facilitate student access and for monitoring apparatus. The weapon systems are dismantled and the spaces are restructured into classrooms and training facilities. These conversions guarantee that future nuclear operators obtain practical experience with real reactor systems in regulated environments. Nuclear submarines are vital in ensuring peace in the world as deterrents. These submarines usually serve for decades providing sailors with safety and whatever amenities can be squeezed into these vessels. When they are decommissioned, most submarines are destroyed, but some serve future roles as training craft, continuing their legacy. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.